you lift your hands up to heaven? Just begin to thank him this morning. Right now from your heart, just begin to worship him. Lord, we lift up your name, Jesus, as above every other name. And God, we worship and adore you. Holy Spirit, come fill this place. Just begin to fill this room with worship.
the glory this morning, Lord God. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the credit belongs to you. Lord Jesus, we come to you today. Everyone get their elements out. If you don't have communion elements, just raise your hand. We're honoring the Lord Christ today. We are honoring him for what he has done for us. It's like my son said in the first service, he did the communion and he said, the reason we take communion so often is because we need so often to be reminded of what he did for us and why we serve him. Why were we even here today? We're here today because of you, Jesus. We're here because of you. So just hold that bread in your hand. It's the symbol of his body, the symbol of his sacrifice for us. We don't take it lightly. The Bible says, do not take this lightly. We humble ourselves to walk with God. We humble ourselves before you, Lord. And we come before the communion table, Lord, recognizing how much we need the redemption that you paid for for us. How much we need it, Lord. How much we depend upon it. And Lord, even our fellowship with one another, Lord, that we walk humbly with one another because of what you did. So Lord, this sacrifice, as we approach it today, if you have anything you need to repent of this morning, now's the time. You don't have to wait till later. You know, you can repent in a nanosecond. You can just repent. Say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. And Lord, I also extend that forgiveness to others. I forgive others. You can also forgive others in just a moment of time because he paid for the grace for us to do it. And so Lord, we approach the communion table with a heart that is free, a heart that is clear, free from sin, we're forgiven. Free from aught, we forgive others. And Lord, we just thank you as we reverently take the bread this morning. In Jesus' name, let's take it together. As we receive the symbol that is your blood, Jesus, such that no greater price has been paid in all the universe, the most costly commodity. We hold the symbol of it in our hands today. And Lord, we gratefully and thankfully accept your redemption and accept your forgiveness in this cup together. In Jesus' name, let's take it together. Now, I would like for you to just stand quietly just for a moment. Just receive the grace of God on your life. He's forgiven you for everything. He holds nothing against you. He gives you the grace to walk with him. So Lord, we receive it this morning. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your power in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone can say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We'll welcome church. So good to have you here as a family. So good to have y'all watching online as well. Before you're seated, just go ahead and greet one another and offer the love of Christ. And then you can be seated. Amen. everyone. I wish you a happy Mother's Day today. We wish you a happy Mother's Day. All the mothers in the house, whether you're a mother or not, you had a mother. You did have a mother. 
So we, we honor all mothers today, which we'll be talking about in a few moments. But I also just want to welcome everyone today. And if you're visiting with us for the first time, we would love to know about that. Hopefully you stopped at the first time guest tent on your way in. Um, but we just uh, would like to ask that you would take a new here card out of the seat in front of you and if you want to you can scan the QR code or you can write on there that way we have a record of your visit and uh, we that way we know who you are but afterwards please stop by again let us talk to you let us pray for you we're just so glad that you're here with us today um, let me I've got a few announcements for you first of all the Bible school the World Harvest Bible Institute for the month of May is on homiletics Homiletics, what is that? Homiletics is just how to present the gospel message effectively, how to learn how to preach better, teach better, present the gospel. And we like to encourage all of you, if you're a Sunday school teacher or you work in street reach or you present the gospel in any way, please come to this class. You will learn so much about how to put a cohesive message together and present it in such a way that people's lives will be touched and changed. Amen. Um, we are coming into graduation season, so if you are a high school graduate or a college graduate, please let us know on Church Center because we will be celebrating our graduates the last Sunday of May. We will have everybody up here, pomp and circumstance, you know the drill. It's going to be great. Everyone likes to be able to walk, amen, after their graduation, so let us know. Our camps are coming up. Fusion Camp is our elementary school camp. It's second through fifth grade, current second grade through current fifth grade. And I just want to encourage you, if you have a child or you know a child in that age group, get them to Fusion Camp because it is a life-changing camp. So many of our young people in this church tell us that that was the time their life was changed. They point back to the time when they went to Fusion Camp. Not only did they make friends that lasts for a lifetime, but God touches them in that camp. So if you don't have someone you want to send, you can go on Church Center and you can sponsor a child. We always sponsor children every year. We can sponsor our Street Reach kids as well if we have enough sponsorship. So go ahead and do that. And then we have one public service announcement. Um, you know, we have a church right next door to us, right over here, um, Gethsemane Missionary Baptist Church. And we love them over there. We love them. But please don't be tempted if you're late for church to park in their parking lot. <laughs> My son said, we've got revenge parking going on. They're revenge parking over here for us. And um, he also said, if you park over there, go to their church, go to their service. No, anyway, let's, let's respect their space over there. Our overflow is over at Sweet Apple. We know it's a little bit further away, but it is worth the trip. Amen. And we are celebrating Mother's Day today, but my wonderful husband has to share his birthday with Mother's Day. <laughs> Pastor Merrick's husband is today. His birthday is today. So let's just sing happy birthday to him. Here we end. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Mary. Happy birthday. Amen. Pastor Mary, come on up here. Pastor Merrick, come on up here. Come on up here. Thank we you. We love our pastor. Oh. He's so sweet. He was honoring Mother's Day. He had a nice card for me this morning. And he's honoring mothers today. And we are honoring mothers today. And um, before, we have, we, before we honor the moms in the house, we have a short video that just honors moms. And I love this video because it talks about how moms have many of the same qualities that God shows us. Mom shows us those same qualities. So we have that cute little video for you. It's Mother's Day, a time to celebrate all the wonderful mothers out there not just for being shining examples of how great a mom can be, but also for being beautiful reflections of who God is. Like God, you've provided for us, 
you've shown us how much you care from the very beginning. With God, you've guided us, helping us navigate through every decision, big or small. You've been patient with us, helping us grow and learn from the mistakes we make. And like God, you forgive us, offering us grace so those mistakes can never define us. You've been present. It sounds so simple, but it's so important just knowing you're there when we need you. And most of all, you've loved us unconditionally as only someone filled with God's love could. So today we thank you, moms, for all of this and so much more. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. <laughs> On that note, if you're a mom in the house, would you please stand so we can honor you today? All the moms, stand up. There we go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at all these godly women in the house. We honor you today. God bless each and every one of you. We love you. We're praying. Oh, let's pray a blessing. Pray a blessing on all the moms. Keep standing. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Come on, moms. I had my daughter, the first service, stood up. I say that. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I'm oh, sorry. It's just getting over still. Let's, let's lift our hands up and Jesus say, Lord, I pray a blessing on every mother here. Father, we want to honor them today, but Lord, there's nothing like your honor. Honor them with your presence. Let the anointing of God rest on them mightily. Let them celebrate this day along with their families. And we speak strength. We speak blessing. We speak favor. Your grace on every one of them. Bless the mothers. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyway, uh, praise God for mothers. Amen? Amen. I want to invite up uh, a dear sister, uh, Adria Merritt, if you're here. Give her a hand as she comes. She's a great lady. And what I love about Adria, she's a, you know, is this very pretty young lady is a construction, has her own construction engineering company. What the? I mean, it's like, really? And she does very, very well. She rebuilds things, and she's booked up months in advance. But she has got a testimony that's powerful. Well, first of all, happy Mother's Day. Wait, 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 sorry, my bad. That happened last time. <laughs> happy Mother's Day and happy birthday. I am so grateful for these two and love them so very much, and a lot of the other leaders in this house and this family. This is an amazing church. You're blessed, and I'm blessed to be in this house. Um, about four and a half years ago, I went through a pretty devastating divorce. I was primarily a stay-at-home mom, so now I'm faced with what am I going to do, not only with my life, but what am I going to do financially, and how is that going to work out? So I decided um, to put my house up for sale and, um, you know, rent for a year. That was kind of my plan. Like, I'm going to put my house up for sale, start a business, and rent for a year. And then after that, when the business is kind of off the ground, I'm going to buy another house because I don't love putting money in someone else's pocket. I'm not a big fan of renting. Amen. Um, so I, you know, started to do that process after the year was up. And how many of you know that when you own a business, now all of a sudden you have to prove viability for years, two, three years or whatever. And they also want like a pint of blood in your firstborn and whatever. So, um, <laughs> So when that, I finally qualified for this loan, the market went nuts. All the prices were ridiculous. I kind of felt like I was settling for something I really, you know, didn't want, like something I was going to have to renovate. And I do that all day. I don't want to go home to my own house and do that. So um, I fell in love with this townhome community. It's a new build. It's, you know, it's currently under construction. But there were 600 applicants for 65 units. So I kind of... Oh, well, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I was making bids on other houses, losing bids. People were overbidding me. It was just, a, you know, kind of crazy. And so um, that was, you know, like the end of last year. So February comes around, and I get the phone call that I got picked in the lottery for one of these units. So, which is, you know, funny how they have to go to this lottery. You have to system. go to a lottery. Um, but you won 
I got huh. picked. I like it was actually kind of a whole other testimony I won't go into today. But um, someone else, like a oh, day before the prices were going to go up again, somebody else canceled a contract and they called me. I was next on the list. Wow! So it's all come on, natural. hallelujah, so, Jesus. So I start I start going through this loan process, and the week before Holy Week, I get you know like a notice in my portal, my mortgage portal, stamped by the government. You know the the mortgage rates have gone up without me knowing. And you can lock it in, but you have to pay a fee every 21 days. Now, my house is not going to be done until the end of June, beginning of July. So every 21 days from that point until then, I have to pay this fee. So my mortgage is going up, my closing costs are going up, and, you know, what are you going to do? Like, you, the government stamped it, and I'm already kind of in it, so I, you know, have to stand for it. But um, I really didn't know what to do. So Tuesday of Holy Week, I started looking, you know, that evening. I got home from work. I started looking into the accounts where I had this money put away for my down payment, and and they're all down, you know, the market, it's every, everybody's investments are down, probably some of you know that. Um, so I really can't even meet like my original closing costs. So I'm trying to figure out like, what am I gonna do? God, what are we gonna do here? Like, well, how's this gonna work? So I uh, started thinking about resurrection seed and that's a pretty significant seed for me. So I started to think like, hmm, can I, you know, make that a little less or can we, you know, skip it this time? No. But I, I said, you know what, God, you and I had a conversation about this and I had already purposed in my heart and he already confirmed like this is the amount I'm given. So I wrote the check from my business and from my personal account and I put them in that envelope and put them in my purse. Wednesday morning, I get a text from my sister and we have this property in Florida that was my grand, part of my grandfather's estate and we put it under, or got it under contract to sell like two, three years ago, but it's been under review because it's on a, a beach property, it's protected. They weren't even sure they were gonna be able to build. They wanna build like a high rise or something on it. Well, I got that text that morning, the very next morning and she said, it's sold and it closes in eight days. Come on! And it is. My cut of it is enough for the whole new down payment, the entire thing, all my moving expenses, hiring a moving company, and some a little extra to do some fun things I want to do to my house. So, but I, told, I said first service that um, when I came to put my resurrection seat in pastor's hand for him to pray on it, he looked straight at me and said, you believe? And I said, yes, I do. And he had no idea the testimony was already in that envelope. It was already there. So, you know, I'm just grateful. And I said, last service, you know, every time you choose obedience, you choose God again. So keep choosing God by choosing our obedience. Listen, that is so powerful. Glory! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this miracle. Adrian, I know there are a lot of other people believing for houses. And I believe what God did for one, he'll do for all. And uh, I said this on the first service. I will say it again, the second service. You know what? We got builders here, yeah. and we need to, I, I'm, I'm really praying about it. They've done it before in other churches, in form a cooperative. Yeah. You buy property, and we put our own houses up in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. We put our own houses up. I did say this. My brother did that. He's a builder. I think it was 50, 60 houses. He did that. Bad builder subdivision. The only bad thing about it, and all the church's members moved in. It's full of church members. You don't have any unsaved church people I mean, around you. They're all Christian. And it has some other bad things. If you're staying in that Sunday, everyone knows it. Hey, look here. <laughs> <laughs> they see their cars. <laughs> or it's in the garage you couldn't see, but it's just funny. But I want to pray about that. I want to pray for houses to be rele released for people. Amen. And uh, can I say you are like the exact example we want to hear about sowing a significant seed and watching God do a miracle. And all i got to say is uh, thank you. And would you do me a favor? Doesn't she speak so well? I mean, yeah. a lot of information got done like, like that. So since you're on a roll, would you pray for the people's offerings and sure. tithe? Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for the opportunity just to come before you and worship you with our giving, with our seed, Heavenly Father. We know that when we put seed into this ground in particular, Heavenly Father, this good, fertile ground, Lord God, that you will multiply it and bring it back to us yes. 10, 20, 30, 100 fold yes. in Jesus' name. And right now, I offer a prayer for everyone who's believing for a house, Heavenly yes. Father. Let them catch a vision and a revelation of your obe or their obedience, Heavenly Father, that when they obey obey what you've told them heavenly father you will put supernatural blessings on their lives we thank you and we praise you we honor you heavenly father in jesus name amen, amen. we love you
did a great job. All right, now we're going to receive today's tithes and offerings as you come, come in faith, believing. I want to just say this about our economy. We know gas is up. We know, uh, we know inflation is hitting our nation like never before. But we are people of faith. We are people of faith. And so we do not get commiserating with the world's position. But we look to God. We say, God, you see what's going on? If ever is a time for the blessing, I'm looking for it. Increase other flows of income, divine blessing in Jesus' name. And I believe there's going to be a, a, a reset for the houses anyway, price-wise, in Jesus' name. I said, they're going to have to pass. I'm going to pass a law. You can't have people from California buy everything here in Georgia. That said, hey, yeah, your investors, we're going to put a cap on you, brother and sister. But anyway, I'm believing for that increase for you. In Jesus' name. Everybody say, I'm in faith. I believe God for his divine hand of favor on my finances. You believe that. Amen. Well, then we're going to act upon it now in Jesus' name. If you're a first-time guest, this is how we give. If you're not a first, this is how we give, period. Or you can come forward with your envelopes. Or you can come forward with your phone and pray for God's blessing on your uh, giving. Amen. Christian Wicks, where are you, my brother? Come right up here and bring Lorraine. Come on now, bring them both up here. Amen. Give them a hand. Now listen, they've got something great to say. Now we know that these two are wed to be married. Isn't that exciting? Hallelujah. So we're excited, but before we do that, we're going to pray in Jesus' name for the offerings. Freddie's good to see you. Good to have you up here. You, you were the first service too? No? It's your second. Maybe I saw you as a phantom. <laughs> oh, we have my sister coming. Let's reach out in faith believing. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the divine increase on every offering and tithe. We believe in Jesus' name that you are a supernatural God. And what we're looking at is supernatural in it's in the spirit. We release our giving to you. Thank you for making a way prosperous for our lives in every area. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We love you. God bless you. Give, give, these, give these hostesses a hand, the ushers. Okay, this is exciting. Man, you went. Tell us what you did yesterday. Okay, so yesterday we had our second Splendor Night of Worship in downtown Atlanta. What is Splendor? What so is Splendor is uh, Splendor Ministries is a ministry that me and Christian OMB run. Um, we do it online and we have stuff that we do downtown. Downtown to reach out to the lost downtown. Yes, so we, we work with the we pray and feed the homeless downtown as well as work online to disciple young adults to be on fire for God. Isn't that exciting? It came from their heart. They're doing it. It's really, it's from their own vision. And then what happened yesterday? Oh, man. What happened? So much stuff happened yesterday. It was crazy. We had a worship service. The worship was anointed. And then Greg Hernandez gave the word of God. It was a simple gospel. We had 
I think at the end of the day, it was 30 salvations downtown. Come on! Um, a man was just walking down the street on one of those scooters, and he saw, we have open windows, so everyone can, who walks by can see worship going on. This is like downtown. Downtown, downtown. And a man was just riding a scooter, and he just sees us. And Greg points from out inside. He says, hey, you, come in here. And the guy just walks in. He's like, what's up? He's like, if you were to die today, do you know if you'd go to heaven? He's like, no, I don't. He said, pray this prayer with me right now. And he prays the prayer of salvation, gets saved. And he's like, okay, I'm gone. See you guys. <laughs> so it was, it was anointed. People got delivered from a lot of things they were dealing with. And it was beautiful. I'm so proud of these young people. Hallelujah. And do you want to say, Lorraine? It was powerful. He said everything. It was great. Isn't this a cute couple? I mean, I just love these guys. They're just great. Both sing, both preach. They preached, was it the two Sundays ago? Yeah. You preached at the uh, tent revival. Powerful. You know what I love about it? We're raising up young Holy Ghost champions for Christ. We, I, just, I just cannot thank God enough for you. And, but I want to get prepped. I, I, this caught me by surprise because I want to be there next time. Yes. Amen. So please forgive me for not showing, but I want to be there. Forgive you. Okay. <laughs> Let's give him a hand. We love you guys. Praise the Lord. Would you like to know how much money came in for the resurrection seat? Would you like to know? Okay. Where'd he go? Okay. Boom! 157,000. That is amazing. That is nothing but amazing. So our faith is with your faith that every bit of harvest that's coming your way comes your way, that you have an abundance in Jesus' name. Now we have some very special guests coming up this, year, this month. We have John Avanzini who's like 86. I think his birthday is on the Sunday he shows up. And he told me, he canceled everybody else. He's got, he said his, his doctor said he cannot run. He's running flat out. Meetings every week, two or three week. And he's cutting back once in a while. But we're part of the while. <laughs> yeah, I'm, saying, I'm saying thank you, Jesus. Because if you capture his teaching and that anointing that's in him, it will impact your life forever. But then we also have right behind him, Dr. Jerry Savell. And uh, I mean, he's going to be phenomenal. But he's going to be here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So it's be like a four-day run of some of the best of the best. But I recognize that our battle in this world, every battle you face is a spiritual battle ultimately. We face evil spirits. And so we have a card out there. I want you to pick it up. We do have prayer meetings every morning. We have prayer meetings Sundays at 6.30. But we have special church-wide prayers. It's on this card. The follow this coming Friday from 8 to 10. And the Friday after that from 10 to 12. And there's some particular people I want to pray for and pray with. But we're going to be praying for your families and for your life. And I want to, I'm going to be ushering in some times of fasting if you want to participate. But come in these meetings, I want to be fasted up. I want to be prayed up. I want 100% of what we need to receive, we receive. I want to squeeze the orange so hard there's no juice left. Does that make sense? You know, but, and we don't, we're going to come participating and putting a demand on these meetings. And Dr. Savell was here when he called up to me. I was blessed that he came for one night. He said, the Lord tells me I should come for three nights. I said, I'm not going to argue with that. He said, I'll never do this, but I'm asking to come for three nights. I said, help yourself. I mean, people are trying to knock his door down to come to their church. He wants to come for three nights. And I have a feeling it could go longer. I told him, I am open for a move of the Holy Ghost. Just bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. So um, be in prayer and come expecting in the mighty name of Jesus. So now we're going to go to our sermon. This is Mother's Day. Normally, I do not do this. I honor the mothers, and then I preach the series I have going on. But I felt in my heart, the Lord said, I want to honor the mothers today. Amen. I'm going to have a sermon that will honor the women of God in the house of God. 
So men, you have to engage because there are parts of this that fit you. Amen. Everybody say, honor, honor. Mothers. mothers. But you're going to begin with Hebrews 11, 11 through 12 is our verses. And my title of my sermon is Honoring Women of Faith. And so we're covering everybody here. And verse 11, it says, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past due age, past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised, because she judged him faithful who had promised. That's a key phrase in that whole verse. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, talking about Abraham, were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Father, I thank you you have an abundance for every believer here today. The same miracle working God that worked for Abraham and Sarah is the same God on the planet today. And Father, the principles still are true. Let it become alive in our hearts. And Lord, let every woman here in particular be encouraged, strengthened, and her own faith built up for what you want to give to them. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. So this is a sermon primarily to mothers, to encourage mothers, to lift them up. And to be a blessing to them. The Bible says we ought to honor our mothers. The Bible says that in Romans 13, 7, we need to give honor where honor is due. The Bible says the woman is the weaker vessel. I have scripture for that. As strong as you guys are work out. I got some women. I, don't, I remember uh, Cynthia. You wouldn't want to tangle with Cynthia. Whitehead. She works out like crazy. Um, but I'm talking about the overall, the strength of a man is different than the strength of a woman. I'm sorry, the gender I just, just got to get over it. It's just the way it is because God made it that way. But God then turns to men and says, you got to honor your woman, especially in the home. First Peter 3, 7, you better honor your wife as the weaker vessel. So I want to talk about this honoring because women in the Bible are really lauded. I want to say this about the Christian faith. The Christian faith is the only faith in the world that lifts women up. If you go to Islam, you go to Buddhism, you go to any kind of faith, woman is put down. It's, it's just sad. And you go to many parts of Africa in the animist beliefs. What they do, women, is cruel. I mean, I can get into it, but I don't care to say from the pulpit. But the Christian faith lifts women up. In Christ, we're co-equals. Amen. But great, the things that women of faith have done, deliverance has come through them. Nations have been shifted for God because of their obedience. They have been like a nation-shaking group of people, and they come behind a no good thing. I promise you, women are amazing. God gave two whole books just for women, Book of Ruth and Book of Esther. They're the heroes in the story. And so I want to lift women up because God lifts them up. And as a matter of fact, we can start off with Eve. Eve. The mother of all humanity. Without Eve, there'd be none of us here. In fact, if you think about mothers and what mothers do to bring out a, bring forth a child into the earth, men contribute a little bit, but women a whole lot. In Jesus' mighty name. Women are like, it's major. If anyone has been a father and participated in your pregnant wife in helping deliver the baby. I shared this at the end of my sermon. I shared the first of the sermon this time. I was like... My wife's a nurse, and she wants to do everything medically and all this stuff. So we do this whole Lamaze thing. You can go through Lamaze, but I just got one thing to say. Save your money. <laughs> We're paying all this money, and I remember having to walk down these halls, down this hospital room, and all these carpet, and we're all laying on the floor. It, I felt very unmanly with two pillows under my arm. And, and you get there, and you, they're, they're, we, they go through the whole thing. The whole thing is breathing exercises, and, you know, you can deliver your baby naturally if you'll just relax. And <sighs> Okay, so we had all this prep. D-Day. <laughs> She's having a baby. I'm coming up there. Man, I, I, man I'm, I'm here to exercise the days and hours I put into this thing. I said, Okay. She's screaming and all this stuff. I said, honey, we need to get into the breathing. Start breathing, <laughs> breathing, breathing. And then she turned into someone I'd never seen before. <laughs> I'm serious. 
she, she turned around and said, shut up. <laughs> she said, get the doctor. I want an epidural. <laughs> That's what she said. So I tried to talk into reason. I said, now listen, honey. We went to the Lamas. That's what I told her. She got even more ferocious. I mean, I had to get up. I said, okay, okay, okay. Doctor, please, will it, please, please. And I'm kind of glad because then she became back normal. The doc, when she's having her first baby, Tessa, did not want to come out. She said, I'm coming out. I like it up in here. I said, no, you got to come out. She wouldn't come on out. And they had to do all this surgery. Kind of, oh. And so the doc says, I'm in the actual surgery room right now. You know, and they got the big, like, how they do it, like a shield. You can't see the actual mom. She says, come back here and see this thing. I said, no, 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 no. In fact, in fact, I'm leaving. I am leaving now. And I learned my lesson. I will never go back again. I, the, the other two, I'm in the waiting room. I, I, I just show you. And then you get these crazy dads. I mean, they got, uh, they got the video camera. I mean, my God, they're filming. What? Where, where, where are you going to show that? I mean, look at. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, months later, uh, honey, I got some coffee and biscuits. I want to throw show the show the video. You, you don't say. <laughs> I mean, uh, please, please, leave the cameras alone. Just stay in the waiting room and just pray in the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so. But our women, I, I've always respected women because as growing up in the mission field, women missionaries outnumbered the men four to one. Very male, there was at least four women. If you go to church, the leadership in church is women. We, we have men, but if one for the women, the church was shut down. Women are just so servant-oriented, faithful. Yong Cho said he had 50,000 deacons in Korea. He said 47,000 are women. 3,000 were men. And you see it around the world. But that's why we have a men's ministry to get the men up. Come on, men. Come on, men. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. Hallelujah. But Eve was deceived by the devil. Eve gave the fruit to her husband, who was not deceived. So the man is far more culpable for his sin. So when you get to heaven, don't slap Eve, slap Adam. <laughs> I'll just have one slap. I'll say, you know, Adam, I love you. <laughs> this is for everything. <laughs> what were you thinking? It's okay. But <laughs> in Genesis 3.15, there's a promise that God gives prophetically. And it comes to the woman. It's amazing. It says, I'll put enmity between you and the woman. Talk about the devil. Enmity means hatred, hostility. And between your seed and her seed, and he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. If you look into the Hebrew, that word also means crush. How many know the devil may have crushed Jesus' heel at the cross? But crushing a heel and crushing a head is two different things. Hallelujah. When you crush a head... You're dead. And so that's what God prophesied. It said, through the woman, through the woman. We think about Mary. Mary gave birth to eternal life for all humanity. Come on now, we need to honor women. We need to honor women. Uh, I think women are the toughest of the two in the long run. They'll stick it through. They have tenacity and... Uh, and in the Bible, we, we just find all these women of faith that have done tremendous things. So you go back to Genesis 12, 1 through 3. God meets with Abraham. And he's going to bring the Messiah, the Messiah through his family line. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation, Abraham. Your name will be great. And through your family, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Speaking of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, would be birthed through his, li his lineage, and he be the one to step on the devil's head. Well, I tell you, when he prophesied that to Abraham, Satan was listening. Because we see this long trail of women 
that can't bear children. And every one of them had to have a supernatural move of God to bring it to pass. Sarah was childless for years, decades. And it wasn't until she was 90, 9 zero. Now, if you're 90, picture yourself having a baby. You'd rather not. But it's happening that God literally caused the baby to come forth. But the devil went around shutting up wombs because he realizes through the birth of that child will come one to crush my head. And we go through one legacy after another because we see that Rebecca married Isaac, the son of Abraham and Sarah. And Rebecca could not have children. Same problem. Satan doesn't want the seed. You have to understand these things are spiritual. We fight spiritual battles. The devil does not want you to birth, male or female, the purpose and the plan of God for your life. It will always seem like a struggle because the enemy is against birthing of God's plan and purpose. Do you understand that? But you got to push back. And that's why you're going to see people like Sarah. But because she believed the promise, that was, that was the reason she received the child. Whatever she didn't believe the promise, whatever if Abraham didn't believe the promise, God would raise up another man and another woman and they would start it again. But God would keep going through till we find somebody that would believe the promise and stand on the promise and say, I'm not backing up the promise. I'm not leaving the promise. I'm going to just have the promise. I'm not going to stand on my feelings. I'm not going to stand on circumstances. I'm going to stand on the promise of Almighty God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what defeats the enemy. And so God moves supernaturally through Re Rebecca, and she received Jacob and Esau. Jacob, he married Rachel. Rachel was childless, but through Rachel came Joseph. Joseph, the great redeemer for the whole tribe of Israel. But it came through a miracle. Rachel was also, her womb was shut up. And you go through, there's a reason why God shows it. Because the enemy, Satan, wants to destroy the seed. Always know this. Your family is not just have little kids to play with, send them to school, and aren't they cute? That's not the purpose of God. That's secondary. The, the primary purpose of you having children is given to us in Malachi chapter 2 verse 15. Is that God wants to raise godly seed. He wants you to raise up people. Listen to me. That are devil stompers. That when they rise up, that they know how to crush the devil's head. In Jesus' name. And you see, that's what church it will be all about. That's what your family should be all about. I want to raise up a champion for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you women of God, listen to me, you've got great heritage. Over the centuries, the faith has been passed down. We look at some more women. You know, we look at Jochebed, the mother of Moses. She was a sharp cookie. Pharaoh said, all you midwives, kill the males. But she spared Moses. And she built a little boat and put her little kid in it. Now, what mother does that? I mean, can you imagine taking your baby? A month old, put in like a little, two foot little, little, whatever, a little boat. And just, okay, kid, I'll get you later. <laughs> Push you out there in the reeds. I mean, there are gators out there. No, crocodiles. I mean, this, I mean, there are snakes. It could tip over. And there's no baby. But she's willing to take the risk because I want to take the risk because I'm not going to allow them to kill my baby. She says, you're not killing my seed. It's all about the seed. You're not taking my seed out. And so we see her as a woman of great faith, and she birthed Moses that brought, that brought deliverance. You see why the devil doesn't want the seed? Because the Moses, one man, brought deliverance for a whole nation. And then this nation begins to grow. But we constantly see the woman in the, on center stage, constantly. Then we see a look at um, the other great women of faith. Like I think about, even as they're going up to Jericho, they're going to take Jericho down. If you back off, talk. Talk with me now with the Israelites. They're on the east side of Jordan. The water is at full flood, the river. It's amazing that when God said, I'm going to split the river Jordan, he chose exactly where he split it. The Bible said he split the river Jordan directly opposite the city of Jericho. Why? Well, if you're from Jericho, you're looking down the wall, 
and you watch the waters go. Really, if you were smart in Jericho, you'd cry, uncle. You've already seen the Red Sea split and a whole army of Egypt destroyed. Now God's splitting the Red Sea, now this, this Jordan River. But one woman got it. Her name was Rahab, but she was a prostitute. But she got changed quickly. She says, I know your God. I says, I know we're toast. So I'm, I'm, I'm making a deal right now. Okay, I took care of the two spies. I'll let you down by a crimson rope outside the wall of the city, which signifies the blood of Christ will deliver you and set you free from the work of the enemy. There's so many types and shadows. But that woman is listed in the genealogical record of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Rahab is in the line of Jesus. What was she? A woman of faith, a woman that got it, a woman that stepped out and said, I'm not following the rest of Jericho because they're going to be toast. And then you go down the line of other women like Ruth. Now, Ruth is cool. Ruth is a Moabite. But Ruth marries Boaz, an Israelite. And Ruth gave birth to a son named Obed. And Obed gave, son, gave birth to a son named Jesse. And Jesse gave birth to a son named David. Wow. Here's a, here's a Moabitess. But she has faith in God. That goes to tell me, I don't care what race you're from. I don't care what background you're from. As long as you have faith in God, it overrides everything else. Hallelujah. But I got to thinking. That made David one-eighth Moabite. Do you realize how much power one-eighth Moabite is? Did you know? If you can track your genealogical record and prove that you have one-eighth Cherokee in you, there is free land waiting for you at the Cherokee uh, Nation in North Carolina. It's a true story. They've got a land lot look, looking over a beautiful valley just for you if you can just show them that you're one-eighth Cherokee. i got people looking right now. I'm going to check that out. <laughs> land so high, I guess I could com commute from North Carolina. Praise the Lord. But you go through others that are great, great, great. One of my favorites is Deborah, the prophetess. And she tells Barak, he said, listen, because right then there were, uh, Israel was going through times of seasons of complete bondage, devastation by the invading tribes. And they were the Can this tribe from Canaanite. They were Canaanite tribes. They had tremendous power over them. So Deborah tells Barak, go and fight them because God's behind you. This is a, this is a warrior. Warrior says, <clears throat> they have 900 chariots of iron, 900. He said, they're far better equipped than we will ever be. I don't think I can do it. And so Deborah says, I'll go with you, fighting man. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, Deborah, I'll take it. And the Bible says, she said, because I'm going to go with you, you don't get the credit, I get the credit. Because she had the guts and the backbone. Why? Because she was a woman of faith. And there's another woman of faith in this story. Because the story goes that Israel routed the army completely. And in fact, the head of the army, the commander-in-chief, Sisera, he starts running for his life. And he's running and he's running and he's running and he's getting so tired. And there was a lady named Jair, J-A-I-R. Saw this general. He said, General, come here. I'll take care of you. I know you're tired. Open up her tent. Why don't you lie right down here? Put a blanket of him. He said, man, I'm thirsty. You got any water? You know what? I'll get you something better. Gave him milk. And so she drank the milk, covered him up. He says, don't tell anybody I'm here. He said, oh, I won't. <laughs> and the Bible says, when he fell asleep, which didn't take long, she goes out and gets a, a big old hammer and a big old iron tent peg tiptoes into the tent, puts the spike on his temple, bam, and drives it right through to the ground. One dead Sisera. In fact, when Barak comes galloping up, hey, where's Sisera? Come here. There he is. You know what that tells me? A woman took out the general. Listen, you women, you don't know how powerful you are. I know some people say, the men say, I am the head of this house. You may be, but the woman's the neck. 
You may be. And so we have these great stories. Esther, Queen Esther, most beautiful. She won the beauty pageant, and she was a Christian. That tells me you can go, go to the beauty pageant and be a Christian. I remember when I was a teenager, as an 18-year-old girl in our youth group, and someone said, you know, you should run for Miss USA. You know, it's a big old process, six months training, you got to do everything. And lo and behold, our youth group teenager won Miss USA. It was amazing. Won Miss USA. You know, we didn't think she was that pretty until she got all dolled up. I mean, you know, just a t-shirt and jeans, well, her name is so-and-so. But all of a sudden, ta da 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 ta we go, whoa, 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 whoa. But Miss Esther was powerful. Think about how powerful she was. She was the queen. And this woman put her life on the line to jeopardize her life. The story, it plays better than a movie. Evil Haman. He is so evil. He ends up being hung on the gallows. But Esther played the whole thing. It was God. You know, women, you got to be careful. They're very smart. They know relationships. They're intuitive. Amen. So uh, respect your wife. Amen. You men, you can fast and pray for three days to determine the plan of God for your life. Or just ask your wife. Just ask her. Just say, hey, what is God, what is, what is God saying? You know, I'll come back and I'll come back with an answer to my wife and tell her that's what I got from God through fasting and seeking God. She'll go, I knew that all along. Okay. Okay. And then we have a person, then we go down the line of history. Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. Again, she can't have a child. Again, it had to be a move of God. See, the devil doesn't want these holy seed loosed on the earth. But she had a baby by a miracle. Then finally, the mother of all mothers, Mary. Think about this. Caught the devil off guard. Because her seed didn't come from man. It came from God. She was a virgin. But she bore, think about this. I know the Catholics go too far. But sometimes even Joel can go too less. We should honor the woman of God. That God literally picked out and said, you are highly favored among all the women. And then she said when she heard, the, you know, think about this as a mother. Uh, the angel of the Lord will come on you. Come, come upon you. The presence of the Lord shall surround you. And you will bear a child from God. I mean, you, you, you don't hear her say, would you mind repeating that? I mean, somewhere I missed it when you started about God. But you know what she said? Be it unto me according to your word. She, she was a woman of faith. A woman of faith. Then she took, I've got two other women I want to talk about. Then I'll be done. Not for the sermon. Just for that section. <laughs> it says, there's a woman in my Bible reading. It just popped out of the page. Her name was Anna. A-N-N-A. And it said, they brought her. I mean, she was in the temple. She said she was a prophetess. She said she had been in the temple night and day, fasting and praying, 84 years. Prior to that, she was seven years married to a man, but he died. So that means if you add the age she has to be married, even if it was young, 12, 14, 15, she's in her hundreds. But this woman, see, God gave it a reason. I want to tell you, women, you may not be seen, but when you fast and pray, you cause things to turn. And I don't know, but so many of the intercessors are women that they get on their knees and before their face before God and ask God for these shifts in their family, shifts in the nation. For I fully believe when Jesus said the first shall be last and the last shall be first, you're going to see in heaven the first seats, woman one, woman two, woman three, woman four. Because why the man can sometimes get the glory for being the man helping to come to pass, the one that really made it come to pass is the woman behind the scenes that interceded. And so he gives Anna a high accolade because you can serve God through fasting and prayer. There are women in this church that fast and pray. No one sees them. God sees it. 
I respect them. The dumbest thing you can do is shut down intercession. There was a man of God who told me this story. He said there was a woman who would come down at the end of every service and wail and cry in the spirit for like until the next service or after any of the end of the services. She spent her whole time in prayer. And the new pastor came, and the church was thriving, souls getting saved. The new pastor came, and he didn't like her, her wailing and praying. Actually, Brother Hagen told the story. And he said, you stop that. We don't want that here. We're a church of order, and we don't like what you're doing. Shut her down. The church began to go down and dwindle and become a very insignificant church. I promise you this. We thank God because the, whatever progress we have in this house is because people pay the price to, to pray. Amen. So I, I just always know that. And then we have this other woman. Her name is Mary Magdalene. Think about this. She was the one that Jesus cast seven devils out. So we know she had some kind of lifestyle going on. But it doesn't matter with Jesus. Once you come to him, your slate's clean. But think about the passion she had. The Bible says of, of her, Jesus said, to whom much is forgiven, much loves much. She was the first one at the graveside of the resurrection, Mary Magdalene. She was the one that ran to Peter and John and told them, he's risen. Actually, she was the first preacher after resurrection, a woman. People that say, we don't believe in women preachers, they're smoking some very bad weed. It's terrible. Because it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. The women are to bring out the gospel just as much as the men. They're called of God to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm giving you these examples because women have had to push against the darkness. They've pushed against not being able to have a kid, but push against all the issues. But we have Sarah as our example. She believed God. You understand this? Because she believed his promise, God brought forth her miracle. And God has that for everyone here today. But I want to go to one step further today. I want to talk about mothers. How high God regards you, mothers. It says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 20, verse 2 and 3, it says the following. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Now let's just sit and talk about this a minute. It says, let's just talk about honoring your mother. I know it says father and mother, but today it's Mother's Day, so it's honoring your mother. Amen. Let's talk about honoring your mother. What does it mean to honor? Honor means to highly esteem, to value greatly, consider precious, special. And he says you've got to honor them. And, it, and this is in the commandments of the Ten Commandments, which in Exodus 19, God shows up with fire, London, uh, uh, thunder, lightning, earthquakes, He's speaking, his voice is so powerful and so strong, the Israelites said, tell him to stop speaking, because it's so fearful. But he spoke out the Ten Commandments. They got to hear it by ear. This is God talking. Then he had Moses come up, and he handed him a tablet written by himself, the Ten Commandments. The first four regarding mankind is how they relate to God. It's vertical. The, re the remaining six is horizontal. But the first one of the horizontal relationships before don't lie, don't commit adultery, is this one. Honor your father and mother. Now think about this. Why would he put a caveat, an addendum? It's the only commandment that has an addendum. He says, if you honor your mother... Your life will be blessed. And your life will be long. I mean, you'll fulfill the length of your days. Through honoring your mother. Some of the other translations says, um, you will, this is the passion, you will prosper and it will go beautifully with you. Wow. Who doesn't want the favor of God in their life? But if I know there's favor if you honor what happens if I reverse it and I dishonor my mother? You dishonor your mother, you might as well take a gun and stick it to your head and pull the trigger because you're cursing your life. It will not go well with you. The favor of heaven will not be on you. 
and you'll die an early death. Sometimes we don't understand why people die early. But there are different reasons. But I wonder if some of them is because the way they treated mom. God holds you and I responsible for how we treat our mothers right to the day they pass on. That's why it is absolutely critical that you take care of mom until she goes to be with Jesus. And I realize different cultures have different ways. But I love the Asian culture. I'm in Thailand. You know, we're very independent. Everyone has, we have our own house, me and my four, and the dog. That's it. You can come visit, but don't stay long. Bye. But in Asia, they have houses that they kind of spread. They keep adding rooms. But their culture is, we have the grandmas and granddads in the house. We have some aunts, maybe some single aunts, uncles. We have the grandkids and children. And so it's a built-in, it's like one house does everything. Babysitting is taken care of. You've got mentoring going on. You've got, you've, you've, you know, you've got elderly care going on. It's shared as a family. It's one happy family. We might do good to emulate that. But, you know, America, we're so independent. I got my house. Don't, don't, don't step on my yard. What? No, we've got to think about you got to learn to honor. And I watch people that take care of mom and dad. I watch them. But you got to be very careful with how you honor your parents. And mothers, you should respect that honor from your siblings. It's important to teach them. It's the only commandment with a blessing and a warning. And who wrote that? God. I'm going to try to circumvent it. Good luck. What do I do? Repent. If you've been running your mouth, repent and bring peace offerings. It's true. Like my wife said, oh, she's there. I, I, I have a surprise for you today because you're the mom. Mother should be the queen of the home. That's God's dream. Mothers are the queen of the home. You, he says, you husbands, let me tell you how you need to treat your wife. This is found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. You has got some strong stuff. Husbands, 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He said, why are you talking about husbands all of a sudden? Because the way the husbands treat their wives will determine how the children will treat their mother. Very important. Very, very important. It says, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. You, you, couldn't, you can't find a higher standard. What kills marriage is we're all centered on us and from both sides. Amen. It's what do I want. It's what, 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 I, what I want. I got rights. Well, I got rights. Divine love never brings separation. It gets quiet in here, but you know what? Divorce is a sin like any other sin. It can be forgiven. Amen? Amen. There's forgiveness at the cross. So there's no condemnation. Please understand that. But understand how the standards of God, God doesn't vary them for anybody. He said, the man, you're called to honor your wife. She really should be we talk about the first lady in the house. My wife is the first lady of this house, Pastor Linda. Give her a hand. Praise the Lord. <laughs> her eye said, you know what her eye said in a second? I know that's payback. <laughs> but a loving payback because you really are wonderful. But it says we're supposed to love our wives as Christ loved the church, he gave himself for us. So Christ died for us sacrificially. He didn't follow up what he wanted. He followed up with, with what was best for us. And I found out that when we have a rouse, it's normally because it's what I want. And I found out, I mean, you know, I'm studying this, honey. This is personal. Because she's deciding where we want to go. We're going away for a few days as a family. 
and I, I have my likes and she has her likes. And I, I'm, I'm studying this, I said, what am I doing? It's whatever she wants, she's the first lady. I mean, uh, <laughs> there's, there's just no contest here. And I, and I was gonna tell you that personally, but Maz will tell you that publicly in Jesus' name. Just wherever you wanna go, honey, is fine with me. Hallelujah. Amen. So she'll be booking it right after the service is over. Trust me, booked. We were going to discuss it, but anyway, forget that. And the Bible says, the Bible says, husbands ought to, verse uh, 28, ought to love their wives as their own wives, as their own bodies. Who loves his wife loves himself. Wow, it's such a high standard. Do yourself a favor, love your wife. You've got to show honor to your wife. And the Bible goes on to say this in 1 Peter 3, 7. It says, you husbands, this is God writing this, you live together with your wives with understanding or with consideration, the King James says. What that means is we've got to be aware of what their needs are and accommodate them as the weaker vessel. Amen? That may, I'm talking about physically. Spiritually, they are very big and strong. I'm talking about physically. And I don't care how much they say we're the same and how they're trying to make every athlete on the same playing field. Scientifically, it's a joke. Anyone who's got half a brain and one eye can figure that out. But obviously, they can't. But the point is, we need to, the Bible says, honor your wife. There's that word again. Honor your wife that your prayers may not be hindered. Think about this. God says, I won't listen and fulfill the prayers that you're sending my direction because of the dishonor you're showing the woman of God I gave you, I'm cutting you off. Now that is strong. And you see, you have to understand, this is the kind of weight God puts on honoring the woman of the house. It's huge. And all I know to do is make her the queen. That's it. Make her the queen. Listen, whatever mama wants, that's what mama gets in Jesus' name. That's the way it is. Because if mama ain't happy, no one's happy. We need to take care of her. It's the plan of God. It's God's dream that your wife is the queen. Now, let me tell you what we do. Well, I, I see the imperfections. Let me tell you the faults. I, I know. We're not perfect. But a, a strong man will cover the faults of the wife. Really. They'll just say, okay, that's how she is. I'm not going to try to change it. That's how she is. But I'm just going to love her. I'm just going to keep loving her. I'm just going to keep loving her. Just like she is. Amen. I just, just wish she would do that. I just wish. You watch men. They're going to run their mouth. But careful. 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 And I'm wondering about this honoring. If God wants to start it at the home because Everything starts at the home. The way the home is, is the way the nation is. It starts at the home. And mothers, what's great saying, the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. It's the truth. The power of motherhood. And perhaps God wants to teach us honor. That's at, the, at, at its core value. Honor the woman of God in your house. So your children learn to show honor so then they reciprocate and begin to show honor to other authorities and have because they need to honor men of God in the house they need to honor now listen to me let me just give you a little quick aside if you want your child to leave church and be a reprobate run your mouth at, at home in the listening of your children about what is going on in church Talk about this person. Talk about that person. Talk about the pastor. You are seeding in their heart the very things that will grow up and they don't want to come to church. Amen? Amen. It's the very, very truth. Esau hated Jacob ultimately. Amalek was his grandson. Amalek hated Israel with a passion. Where did he get that hate? At the dinner table. You say, well, I've been doing that. What do I do? Repent. That's what I go. Repent. 
and pray for crop failure. Lord, the seeds I've sown, I pray you'd have mercy and shut it down. In Jesus' name. Everybody say honor. honor. This is big. Honor your mother. Honor your wife. Honor the, quote, weaker vessel. Don't you dare even think about dishonoring her. It'll cost you your life. I thought God was loving. He is loving. But he won't tolerate nonsense. So let's get back to Sarah, shall we? Sarah is our example of a woman of faith. You know, they laud Abraham. Abraham, the father of faith. We understand that, Abraham. That's great. But this verse gives accolades to Sarah, the woman. Because without her, there would be no Isaac. And so we got to look at what happened here. If you go back to that Hebrews verse, and, just re, and just, we just re, rehearse it again. It says, the book of Hebrews by faith, Sarah. Everybody say, by faith. By faith. You see, you, you can't see it in the natural. You can't even feel it. You just go by what you heard. By faith, Sarah also received strength to conceive seed. At 90, you need some biological miracles. You got to get your stretch back. You got to get a lot of stuff back. <laughs> conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age. And here's the key word, because. Everybody say because. Because, that's the pivotal word of the whole text. Because. Because. Because what? Because she judged him faithful who had promised. She judged him faithful who had promised. Meaning that you shall have a child. But it seems that they tell me it's impossible. You need to put that in your own life. The things that you want to see come to pass, the devil will point at you and say, it's not happening, it's not happening. It will never happen. But as a woman of faith, you can rise up, no, I'm standing on the promise of God, it shall happen. There shall be a turn in my marriage. My children are coming to Christ. In Jesus' name, I stand on the promise that my life is going to be fulfilling the call of God. In Jesus' mighty name, because I'm standing on the promise. You're trying to give birth to something. You give birth by faith. You don't give birth by standing on your feelings, by looking at the circumstances. You give birth by faith. Standing on the promise. And I promise you she had to just keep, okay, God, i got to believe this, i got to believe this. And she had to step over to the place of rest. Because you're going to have a, a, a 90, a baby, you're going to have your faith. You better rest in the, in, the, in the reality of God's promise. The Bible said there's a rest of faith. She stood in the rest of God, wasn't agitated. I'm saying, listen, people may have made fun of her. I know, I know what I've got. In fact, you know what I love about it? Here she is after all these years that she stood in the promise of God. When she had that baby... She started laughing. <laughs> the promise has come. His name was Isaac, which means laughter. God wants you to laugh at your enemy and say, see, devil, I'm telling you, you're a liar. You're a liar, you're a liar, you're a liar. I'm a woman of faith. Now, let me say this to you. All women need to look to Sarah as their champion. And that act of faith and that standard to bring about that miracle has passed down through the centuries through other great women of faith. And so you as a woman of God should stand tall and say, I am a child of Sarah and she's my woman of faith and I'm going to follow her lead. I am going to be that type of woman that stands upon the promise. I'm giving birth to every promise that God has ever put upon my life in Jesus' mighty name. Someone shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. So it's great honor. God honors women like you cannot believe. And we'd do, be, be smart. Us men, we'd be smart to do the same thing. And our honor should not just be just to the women. It should be, it begins to not our own woman, but we should honor all the women. Honor our sisters in the Lord. Honor the brothers. The Bible says honor one another. We value you. If someone you value, you don't run down. Turn your little critical meter off. Anybody can find out what's wrong. Let me explain what's going on wrong, what I don't agree with, I don't like that, about that. Let me tell you about this. No, no. That? that's very interesting. You said that. It's not very effective, though, for moving the ship down the road. You've got to stay in the faith, like Sarah. Faith will cause the hand of God to move for you. Faith will bring his blessing on you. Hallelujah. 
Isn't God a good God? Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And so I believe nations, you never know the child you bear or the one you raise up can shake a nation. You never know. We just want to raise up devil-stomping children. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You're going to squash the devil's head. Don't allow rebellion. Don't allow sedition. Don't allow evil speaking. Don't allow malice, hatred. These are demonic things. You understand that? Demons are behind it. Can I have a demon? They're not. The question is not whether you can have a demon. The only question you have to ask is how many? How many passengers came with you today? God knows. But if you put your faith to work, you can be delivered. I tell you, if you put your faith to work, you can win the battle in the spirit world. That's what these women showed us. You can do it. You can do it. Sarah said, I did it. You can do it. Rebecca said, I did it. You can do it. Rachel said, I did it. You can do it. John Gabbett said, I did it. You can do it. You go right down. Ruth said, I did it. You can do it. Esther said, I did it. I did the whole nation. Come on, come on, come on. I'm giving you examples. I did it. You can do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The women in this church should give the, the men a run for their money. We were out praying you, out giving you, out serving you. We're doing everything. I'm running to catch up. Right. That's a good challenge. Right, Ron? I got it right. Praise the Lord. I thought, I thought so. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today that you've given us a great challenge to honor our mothers and everything that entails. On this Mother's Day, we do want to honor mothers. But I want to reach out to the women right now. Because if you're really honest, many of you deal with a broken heart. Things have happened, have come against you. Where you've had hard things spoken. Where you've been mistreated. Even abused. Many women just walk through life with silent pain. But I believe today as we shared this about honoring women, God wants to honor you with his touch upon your life. The Bible says Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. If you're dealing with a broken heart today, God wants to heal you. He wants to send his power into your life. He wants to bring deliverance. He wants to bring healing. Jesus specializes in healing broken hearts. He's going to do it today because he loves you. And so whether you're married or, or a single mom or just a woman of faith, you're a woman of faith. And you say, yeah, pastor, that's me. I want to pray for you. I'm believing the anointing of God to come upon you and for a miracle to happen today. He's going to bind up the broken places, pour in the healing balm of the Gilead, which is Jesus' anointing, and heal you, set you free. If that's you, you say, Pastor, that's me. Just quickly, just stand up wherever you are. Just stand. I want to pray for you. Just stand wherever you are. God's going to heal your heart. He's going to touch you right where you are. People standing everywhere. He's going to heal my heart, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, your help comes from heaven. So as a way to receive that, just gently lift your hands up towards heaven. I believe that's how you... Get in the position to receive that which God wants to bring you. So, Father, we lift up every woman of God that's here today. You know their stories, Father. You know every background. You know everything that's transpired to bring them to this very day. But, Father, we also know that your word declares that Jesus Christ, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, heals broken hearts. So Holy Spirit, come like a mighty wave upon you, those standing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus puts his hand on your heart. And in Jesus' name, I bind and break off. I bind the devil and break off every hurt, every pain, everything that causes you to cry at night, even just to, oh God, how can I go on? 
In the name of Jesus, I break all spirits of fear off you. All intimidating spirits is broken off you. In Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, come. Heal the wounds. Heal the hearts. Let faith arise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, may they push off all hurt, unforgiveness. May it be broken even now in Jesus' name. And bring your peace to brain in their heart. Let the healing power of God restore supernaturally that which has been broken. In Jesus' name, receive healing to your heart. In Jesus' name, let Him set you free. Free in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. He's here. He's moving. He's doing a work in people's lives. He's touching your heart. He's touching your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shola Baborosikiti. Let's all just stand to our feet, shall we? As they remain standing, let's stand to our feet. I just want to ask if there's anybody here in this house, you're a woman and you're married. Married women only. But it's your heart's desire to have a child. It's your heart's desire to have a child or another child. And I want to pray over you because I believe God's going to give you a child. He's going to give you one supernaturally. If that's you, if you don't want a child, don't raise your hand. We've had many miracles happen in this, in this house. I don't know if Victor is here with his wife, but 10 years they tried for a child and I prayed for them. It's not me. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. I felt the Holy Spirit come upon them. Within one year they had a baby. They are so happy. That baby, I'm going to go dedicate their house later this week, I think. It was years ago, maybe five years ago. It's happened more than once. And I believe God can do the supernatural. Supernatural for you if you need a child. If that's you, raise your hand. It has to be a, a woman, by the way. I have to make clear to qualify this. I'm not believing for anything but a woman. There's a, right there, another one. Right there. Is that right, Desmond? Okay, I prophesy the Brady Bunch on you in Jesus' name. Okay. Anybody else? I see some of the hand. Oh, I see. Oh, right over here. Really? I see. Yeah. All right. I got people waving. Okay, here we go. Get ready. Start painting the room. Okay, here we go. Raise your hand. Well, Hannah's getting on board this one. Did you know that, Chris? <laughs> it's too late now. Father, in the, Lord, now listen, we're just going to release our faith. Father, you see every hand raised. We're asking God, Father, now in Jesus' name, open up every womb to receive a child. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that you will conceive that you will bring forth a beautiful baby to the glory of God. I speak it to you in the name of Jesus. Inception by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. 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 You will conceive and have a child. In Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Lord for doing a quick work in Jesus name. Everybody say thank the Lord. Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah Jesus. Well it's done. It's done. We're going to expand the nursery. We already got like I don't know, we're, we're pretty full. We're pretty full. Now listen I also want to lift up everyone in that here and I want you to just close your eyes just for a minute before we dismiss. I assume that not everyone's right with God here. I never assumed that. 
we had some raise their hands, got to pray for them. This first service, got to lead some of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was wonderful. But if you're here today and you know you're not right with God, you got to get honest with Him. I'm not right with God. But you want to be. Or perhaps you came with a friend and you've never truly given your life to Jesus Christ, the one who's the Savior of the world. You can go to church all your life and never get saved. You've got to be born again of the Spirit. And when you're born again of the Spirit, you know that you know you're born again, and you know you you know when you die, you go to heaven. But if you don't know that for sure, you need to get your hand raised in a minute when I pray this prayer. You need to know that you know that you're sure that if you died today, you'd go straight to heaven. So if you're here and you don't have peace with God, or you're here you've never received Jesus Christ, if that's you, just slip your hand up and say, that's me. Pray for me. That's me. Pray for me. Thank you for that hand. Somebody else. I want to say that. Another hand. Thank you for that hand. Somebody else. Say, pray for me, Pastor. I want to be sure that I'm sure. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay, let's all pray this prayer. Those who raised their hand, pray it out loud. Those who didn't pray it, or don't raise your hand, pray it together with them. Say, oh God, I believe you're real. I believe you love me. And I believe you have mercy for me. So today... I surrender my life to you, O Lord, to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came to this earth, who bore my sins on a cross, who rose again from the dead. I receive the gift of forgiveness. I receive the gift of eternal life. I receive Jesus Christ the Son of the living God. I am born again. I am saved. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Put a fire in my heart that I might burn for you. When I die, I will go straight to be with you. Hallelujah. I am saved. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Now, I can't think of a better time. I know some of you are single. Some of you are not married, but we should honor your mother. Find someone to honor. God wants to honor you. You women. Emily, I want to honor you. Flossie, we honor you. Woman of great woman of God. Rochelle, great woman. Miss, Miss Carolyn, I just can't wait to hear what Ron has done to help you today the kind of money that he will spend on you. I just, it's going to be tremendous. (laughs) Ron is a friend. I I love to tease him because his reactions really get me going. Is that Jordan? Hey! Raise your hands. Lord, I just, I just speak to Jordan. Touch him, God. Bring him to that new place in you fresh start, fresh beginning. Fill him with you, Jesus. Fill him with you. Let me just, oh, come on, Pastor Willie, you do the rest. And, isn't Jesus wonderful? Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, if you're a guest with us, Right out through those doors and right through the front door there, there's a tent right there. We have a gift bag just for you. Also, mothers, don't forget, pick up those carnations as you go out and and take pictures with somebody. Just take some pictures with somebody. It's a great thing to do. Grab one of those cards that talk about the times of prayer. Just grab one of those cards and make sure you know exactly what's going on. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness towards us. Father, we want to give honor where honor is due. Lord, help us to honor the women of God in our lives. And we'll continue to give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we have some deacons and some elders and some folks right down here in front that will pray with you and for you. If you need prayer for anything, you can come on down. We want to pray with you. Don't leave the same way that you came in. And make sure that you shake Pastor Merrick's hand and say happy birthday to him. Amen?